And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Our Father, bless this portion of the Scripture to everyone's heart here today and help them to grasp the spiritual and devotional blessing that's in these few verses as well as the great doctrine of the second coming of Christ that follow. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not going to preach on uh, what you think I'm going to preach on uh, this morning. I just read this passage there that deals with the events that take place in the tribulation preceding the second coming of Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to talk about that this morning. My subject this morning is tell it to Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 24, you have this picture where Jesus Christ is seated out there by himself, and these disciples come up to him and they say, Tell us, Master. Tell us. You tell us. And they ask him the questions. Now, people came to Jesus all his life telling him about things, asking him about things. Man came to him and he said, My boy is dead. What am I going to do? A uh, woman came to him one time and said, My daughter has got a devil. What am I going to do? A uh, fellow bought up some barley loaf, said, These folks ought to eat but don't have enough. What am I going to do? And all his human life upon this earth, the Lord Jesus Christ was hounded and plagued by people with questions. And uh, my subject this morning is tell it to Jesus. You know, back in the back in the army, we had an expression. Whenever a fellow got in a real bad fix, you know, and really started to sing the blues and griping and complaining, you know, we said we said tell it to the chaplain. And of course, we meant it sarcastically. We never meant really because we figured he was just bad a mess as we were. But we said tell it to the chaplain. Now my subject is tell it to Jesus. Now I want to show you some things here this morning that you ought to talk to the Lord Jesus Christ about. Most of you are God's people, and yet perhaps your prayer life is just kind of a series of things where you ask the Lord for certain things. But if you're a child of God, there are certain things you ought to tell the Lord about. You ought to tell the Lord about these things before you tell anybody else. And some of these things you can tell the Lord about that you can't tell anybody else. And I have no respect of persons for age in my audience this morning. I don't care if you're 13 years old, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I don't care if you're eight years old. I'm talking to you. I don't care if you're 75. I'm talking to you when I say tell it to Jesus. All right, first of all, you ought to bring your questions to him. That bunch came there in Matthew 24, and they said, Lord, tell us, what shall this be? What shall that be? You ought to tell him your questions. Bring your questions to him about the future. You want to know where you're going to go when you die? Tell it to Jesus. You want to know what's going to happen in America in the next 10 years? Ask him about it. Bring him your questions. I'm no know-it-all. I can't answer all the questions are. I know where they are. They're in the Bible, but I can't answer all of them. You want to know what God's going to do in the future? Tell it to Jesus. Uh, Jesus Christ can tell you more about the future than any preacher on the face of this earth. Bible said when the Holy Spirit has come, he'll guide you, he'll teach you, and guide you into all truth and show you things to come. If you're worried about the future of your family, now, what are you going to be tomorrow, the next day, worried about the future of the nation? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Don't go to Brinkley or Huntley or one of those poor fellows that doesn't know what, what's going to be in 24 hours. Take it to the Lord. He knows the future from the past. Knows all about it. You ought to tell him your questions. You ought to tell him your sicknesses. Uh, in Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 1, uh, or back in, uh, in uh, Mark chapter 1, uh, verse 30, we have sick people coming to Jesus Christ uh, for help. And uh, in Mark chapter 1, verse 30, Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon at once they tell him of her. You ought to tell the Lord your sicknesses. I believe in the use of doctors, but I don't believe in going to any doctor before I go to the Lord. You got a headache? Try it with the Lord for a while. If it keeps on after you, stay with the Lord a while. Before you pick up the medicine, try the Lord out. Sometimes it'll stay, sometimes it'll go. You got a toothache, try the Lord out for an hour before you give up. Tell it to Jesus. If you have sickness, tell it to Jesus. A man said he prayed for strength that he might achieve. He was made weak that he might obey. He prayed for health 
that he might do great things. He was given infirmity that he might do better things. He prayed for riches, that he might be happy. He was given poverty, that he might be wise. He prayed for power, that he might have the praise of men. He was given weakness, that he might feel the need of God. He prayed for all things, that he might enjoy life. He was given life, that he might enjoy all things. He received nothing he asked for, all that he hoped for. His prayer was answered. He was most blessed. Sometime the Lord isn't going to heal it. Sometime he's going to give you something else. But you'll tell your sicknesses to him. Lady says, I got a daughter sick. She come to Jesus, tells him about it. Uh, back there, Peter's mother is sick. He come to Jesus, tells him about it. Are your children sick? Tell him about it. You kids four, five, six years old, you get the mumps, the whooping cough, the measles, the chicken pox. Get in the habit of telling Jesus about it. Do you do it? You kids five, six, seven years old, you tell him about it? Tell it to Jesus. Man, the Bible named Asa got sick. And when he got sick, the Bible said he sought to the physicians and didn't seek to the Lord. The Bible said he was diseased on his feet, and he sought to the physicians and not to the Lord until his disease got exceeding great. That old boy finally died of the disease, gangrene from the feet, because he sought the physicians and not the Lord. The woman over there in the book of Mark came to Jesus. She had a running issue of blood, blood that wouldn't quit running, and it ran, it wouldn't coagulate, and that blood ran and ran for 12 years, and the Bible said that woman had spent all her living on physicians. She'd gone to this doctor, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and none of them could fix her. And she came to Jesus, and she got fixed. When you're sick, you ought to tell it to Jesus. We have a dear old saint in this congregation, you all know her, that's in now the hospital most of her life. And I don't know how many operations, I lost track of them by now. But I remember one time I was talking up the hospital, and she began to cry. And I said, well, is the pain bad? And she said, no. She said, no, Brother Ruckman. She said, they've just cut on me so much. She said, I'm afraid they're going to kill me before the Lord comes, and I did so want to go up in the rapture. <laughs> and that old sister has had to learn how to do something. She's had to learn how to tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. You ought to tell the Lord about your sicknesses. You ought to tell the Lord about your failures. Take your Bible and turn to Mark 9. When you flunk a test, you ought to tell the Lord about it. You say, oh, he wouldn't be interested in a thing like that. You might be surprised. Uh, Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Or Mark, excuse me, 9, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verse uh, 28. Mark 9, 28, the disciples have been trying to cast out a demon-possessed boy, and when he was come to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? That bunch had tried and tried and tried and failed and failed and failed. You ought to tell Jesus about your failures. Did you ever try to overcome some habit that had a hold of you? You failed and failed, you got up, you got knocked down, you got up, you got knocked down, Listen, before you try a psychiatrist, before you try a psychologist, before you try AA, you try Jesus. You try Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He's interested in failures. Why, well, humanly stand from a human standpoint, I guess his life was a failure. He died the death of a criminal in another man's place. Didn't even have a grave to get buried in. I wouldn't call that a roaring success, would you? I mean, I'm speaking reverently. I mean, from a human standpoint, I wouldn't say Paul was much of a success. I'd say he's a pretty big flop. You know what you need to do? You need to tell it to Jesus. Maybe you fail. Maybe you fail to live up to what you expected of yourself. Maybe you set standards for yourself you couldn't keep. Maybe you tried hard to do something you muffed the ball. Maybe you did something in self-will and now it's too late to go back and undo it. You went ahead and got in. You said, well, I'm in. I'm going to make the best of a bad situation. And you've tried, you've tried, you've tried, you've tried, and it isn't working. You know what you need to do? You need to tell it to Jesus. Yes, I've told it to him. Have you really told it to him? Have you really? I mean, like, have you told it to him like the way you tell it to yourself when you get feeling sorry for yourself? You talk to him that way? Have you told it to him like these uh, fellas do in the VFW and they get down there on a Saturday night and get over the beers, you know, and begin to weep in each other's beer and pat each other's shoulder and, oh, buddy, uh, I sure know you've had a tough old friend and then go through all your battle experiences and tell what a tough time you had you ever talk to the Lord like that? That old colored boy prayed like this one time. He said, just blue, God, just blue. <laughs> you understand what blue is? Ain't praying exactly just now. Tear blind, I guess. Can't see my way through. You know these things. I asked for so many times. Maybe ought to, uh, shouldn't ought to repeat like the Pharisee do, but I ain't stood in no marketplace. It's just between you and me, and you said ask. 
Somehow I ain't asking now, and I hardly know what to do. Hope just sort of left, but faith's still there. Faith ain't gonna go, too. And I know how it is a thousand years, a single day with you. And I mean to tempt you, Lord, with if you be. And I ain't doubting you, but I ain't praying tonight, God. Just blue. <laughs> just blue. Did you ever get that way? Just down the dumps. When you get down the dumps, instead of turn on the radio and listen to some other fellows down the dumps, do you drag each other down the dumps? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. You ought to tell your failures to Jesus. Did you ever see little children that fail to do something and just get all tore up about it? I remember one of my boys uh, many years ago, uh, when he was about four or five years old, I was supposed to do something. It wasn't work or something, but it was a, he was supposed to give a witness or something or quote a verse of scripture. He bust down and cried and couldn't do it. When I asked him why he didn't do it, he said, Daddy, I just didn't have the energy. <laughs> And he got the wrong word, you know. He meant the courage, you know. But energy was the only word he could think of. And I was going to whip him, you know. When he bust down and said, I didn't have the energy, I just gave up, man. I laughed so hard I couldn't touch him. And that boy failed, you know. He failed. Some of you fail your lessons. Some of you fail in high school. Some of you fail to get a college education. Some of you fail to make success in your business. Some of you fail in married life. You know what you ought to do? You ought to tell it to Jesus. You ought to tell it to Jesus. Well, an old song we used to sing, you know. Uh, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You have no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. That's kind of a, kind of a, it's kind of a hillbilly song. The, the, the meter in it doesn't work out right. Folks always have a hard time singing it, you know. You have no other such a friend or brother. Things all messed up there in the word, but the message is good, and the message is tell it to Jesus. <laughs> all right, you got family troubles. Turn to Luke chapter 9. You got family troubles. I go up and down this country talking to people. I'm amazed at the people that go through all the problems they go through and never tell it to Jesus. I've had couples come over my house there for counseling where both of them came in there smoking. Both of them admitted they danced. Both of them admitted that they drank moderately and they're having a hard time having a happy home. And neither one of them was saved. And I've asked them sometimes, would you ever get down together in your room and pray together? And they said, no. I thought to myself, well, my land, what in the world do you expect anyway? Uh, why, when you got family trouble before you do anything, you ought to take it to Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, why, what in the world are you going to do? All right, uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 38. Now begin at 37. It came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. And behold, a man in the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son. Wouldn't that be the prayer of some of your hearts here this morning? You had a boy, you had high hopes for him, and never turned out worth blowing up. Lord, look on my son. Have mercy on him. He's the only boy I got. You know what you ought to do with your sons that don't pan out right? You ought to take him to Jesus. You ought to take him to Jesus. Tell us to Jesus. Why, folks, the Bible have family trouble. You take Jacob, one of the greatest Christians that ever lived. Uh, he had a girl that got raped. Why, you take, he had a boy that wound up in jail, Simeon. Did you ever read about old Jacob? Jacob had a boy that wound up in jail, Simeon. He had a daughter that went through that terrible experience, and he had another boy there that was gone from home for 20 years, never saw him, didn't know whether he was dead or alive. You think that old man didn't have some problems? You ought to take those things and tell him to Jesus. Uh, you take David, he had family problems. Uh, three of his boys turned out to be no good at all. One of them murdered the other one after the other one committed an act of incest with his own sister. How's that for a family? A man beloved after God's own heart. And David was. And listen, when you have problems in your home with a wife or a daughter or a son or a mother or an in-law or a father or a grandmother, you want to tell them to Jesus. And don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit till he quits. When he quits, Romans 8, 28. But don't you quit till he quits. Don't you quit. And listen, you pray it, and you talk it over, just like you talk it over somebody. Some of you folks have had family problems that you've discussed with their relatives and friends off and on for 15 years. Have you prayed about it 15 years? I know women have had terrible time with husbands, and husbands terrible time with their wives, and in most of those cases, they're never, most of them, Maybe some exceptions. In most of them, they didn't really just get down to prayer and just stay down there. One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
And a thousand times a thing like that can be saved if you tell it to Jesus. Maybe one time in a thousand it can't, but you don't know that you've told it to Jesus. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, not just Sunday morning, not just Sunday night, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, stay thou nearby, temptation lose her power when thou art nigh. I need thee every hour, teach me thy will, and thy rich promises in thee fulfill. I need thee every hour, most holy one, oh, make me thine indeed, thou blessed son. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee every hour, brethren, every hour. You're at the table, the baby chokes, you need him every hour. See? You're in your bedroom. You get bad news from somebody. You need him every hour. You're in the living room. You're eating. One of the children gets hurt. You need him every hour. You're out in the backyard working. The telegram comes. Your daddy's about to die. Catch the plane out. You need him every hour, people. Every hour. Tell us to Jesus. You know, Job had family trouble. Job had family trouble. Oh, Job had a wife just like acid. And when he got in the bad and straight, lost everything he had, she just came around and said, well, you're out of God's will. God's all through with you, brother. Curse God and die. And he said, you talk like a fool. That finished that. <laughs> and at the end of Job chapter 42, I already got all his children back. Never ever got his wife back at the end of it. He had some problems. Had to tell him the Lord. You better tell him of Jesus. You take old Adam. He had family problems. You think Adam, the first man that ever lived, had problems, brother. Now, you fellas that have two boys in your family, how'd you like to have the first boy just turn around and shoot the other boy when they get up in the teens? Adam had him. He had problems. When you have problems like that in your family, you need to tell him to Jesus. Tell him to Jesus. The day was long, the burden I had borne seemed heavier than I could longer bear, and then it lifted. I did not know someone had knelt in prayer, had taken me to God that very hour and asked the easing of the load, and he in infinite compassion had stooped down and taken it from me. We cannot tell how often as we pray for some bewildered one, hurt and distressed, the answer comes, but many times those hearts find sudden peace and rest. Someone prayed, and faith, a reaching hand, took hold of God and brought him down that day. So many, many hearts have need of prayer. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Uh, did you ever think about that? Maybe sometime it just gets more and you can stand. And then all of a sudden the pressure lifts and God begins to work things out. Do you ever stop thinking about this? Maybe it's because somebody else is praying. That yeah, tells to Jesus. You tell him about your bereavements. Take your Bible and turn to John 11. You, you need to tell him about your bereavements, about folks dying. John 11. <clears throat> John 11. In John 11 here, one of Jesus' friends has died. John chapter 11, verse 3. Therefore his sister said to him, saying, Lord, behold, he who now lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when Lazarus dies, we read in the Bible, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Uh, before you go to anybody about your sorrows, your family troubles, when God takes a baby, or God takes a husband, or God takes a wife, or a sister, or a brother, or a mother, or a father, tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He's interested in those things. Said he loved them. Said he wept. Said he loved them. Said he wept. And Lord, take somebody, why, uh, sometimes it's more than some of you probably can stand. I hate to think what I'd have to do if I'd have to bury them my young Boy, it'd be rough. Ooh, it'd be rough. I don't even like to think about it. I just don't think about it. I say to myself, the time ever comes, well, then we'll see what we'll see, but I just don't dare think about it. But I know one thing, if the Lord ever did, I know the first person I'd talk to about it, that it wouldn't be you, and it wouldn't be any of my family, and it wouldn't be the undertaker, it wouldn't be the doctor, it'd be Jesus. It'd be Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Some old boy sitting around, you know, some maybe some woman well up in years, you know, and she's got a old Bible there and an old faded rose stuck there between those pages. Maybe it's a, a lily, you know. They'd have lilies a lot of time at weddings, and that thing is stuck there. Some old sister stayed married to a man about 50 years, and he take, the Lord takes him. You know, you folks stay married 40 to 50 years. When the Lord breaks you up, it's just like losing half your body. Folks live together that long, they get to be like each other. 
And oh, they argue, they fuss, they get crammed to each other, you know. Old man lying there in the bed, you know. He thinks sometimes, boy, I'm dead. She's sure going to get everything I got, you know. Lord, devil put those thoughts in you. <laughs> and you're like, woman, sit around there, you know, from day to day and watch that man up there in 60, 70. He gets to be kind of a nuisance. But you know something, that day finally comes. Those two are finally busted up. Let me tell you something, brother. If you can't tell it to Jesus then, you might lose your mind, you hear me? You hear me? I've seen him lose a mind. I've seen him get 70 and 80 after all that time when that thing came, just snap. Just snap. Did everybody tell it to? You can't tell it to the chaplain. You gotta tell it to Jesus. You gotta tell it to Jesus. Over there in Jacksonville, Florida, when the hurricanes come in, I guess they're here for that matter, except you don't have many palm trees. Those hurricanes come in there, the old palm tree bends out like this, see? And they almost bend double. I've seen hurricanes in the Philippines, that old palm tree looks just like that. And all the branches out straight out ahead. And when the storm was over, that old palm tree come up like that. And you know a hurricane come along, take something like an elm or an oak, you know, and just rip that thing right out by the roots and tie that thing off down the ground. You know why? That old oak is stiff and unmovable. It's rigid. It's inflexible. It just stands there and says, I can take it. I can take it. I can take it. I'm just going to grip my teeth and take it. And out it goes. <laughs> And that old palm tree says, I just can't put up with this. <laughs> and over it goes. <laughs> and did you know, when those, time of, those times of bereavement come in your life and the Lord takes somebody precious from you, you don't get by them hardening yourself and stiffening yourself. You get by them just saying, Lord, I just can't take it. And you just bend with the wind and tell it to Jesus, brother. Tell it to Jesus. Now listen, the last thing you ought to tell to Jesus is your sin. And if I'm talking to some unsafe person this building this morning, I say this. I say, you missed the greatest communication you ever had if you never talked to Jesus about your sins. Why, that's all a psychiatrist's couch is. Pay $35 an hour to go in there and tell him what a godforsaken rascal you are or somebody else is. <laughs> go there and lie around. You'll go for that mess and dig down all that slime and filth and then try to say it's therapy and all that stuff. Why don't you tell the Lord about it? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Tell him about your sins. Years ago over in England, there was a <clears throat> fellow named Gorgas. And Gorgas was a street rat and a criminal. And one night, he went into a little old Methodist meeting house intending to kill the preacher. And he, he was loaded like the United States Arsenal. He had several pistols on him and two or three daggers and a blackjack and a couple of clubs and I don't know what else. And he came in the back of that room, that Methodist preacher's house, and some little old unlettered Methodist preacher was up there repeating John 3.16 about once every two minutes because he couldn't think of nothing else to say. And Gerges came in the back there and stood there about two minutes listening to that and he says, oh my God, my sins. And fell down on his face there back in one of the chairs and for about 15 minutes he moaned and said, oh my great sins. Oh my great sins. Oh my great sins. And after about 20 minutes they heard him groaning, oh my great savior. Oh my great savior. And you know something, that old boy got saved and preached the gospel for 20 years. And the last word that fellow said before he died, one second before he died, was free grace. <laughs> now he went, free grace, brother. You know what he did? He told it to Jesus. Uh, you know what some of you unsafe folks ought to do? You ought to clear house this afternoon. You ought to walk get out of the house, shut the doors, lock the windows, turn off the TV, bust the radio, burn the newspapers, lock the icebox, go back in the room, and just get on your knees and just start making a list. The time you're about five years old right after now, and say, Lord, I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I did that, and I thought that, and I said that, and I did this, and this, and I'm guilty there, and I'm guilty there, and I'm guilty there, and I've been putting you off because I can't live it, but I'm still guilty, and I'm going to be guilty, and I am guilty, and tell him about it. You'd get saved before you got out there, you old blabbermouth, <laughs> go around the sand and saying, I can't live it, I'm not ready yet, I don't have the right feeling. You know, I hope I am. I think I am. I'm trying. You know what you need to do? You need to tell it to Jesus. I guarantee you come down that order for about 10 minutes and tell him the truth. You'd be saved when you got up. Instead of coming down to all that alibi, you know, I'm going to wait till I can have the right feeling. you get a feeling, brother. I'll tell you, I don't, I don't believe in praying through. I think if a man receives Christ, he's saved. But I've got just enough old-time Methodist in me to believe that if a man just comes clean with God and just starts laying it out, He'll find Christ. He'll find Christ. All you need to do, you need to tell it to Jesus. 
Years ago, there was a painter by a man named Raphael. Raphael. Uh, he's supposed to be a great colorist. I never thought much of his painting, but he's supposed to be pretty great. And he had this big old painting of these religious pictures, and it had been lying around for years and years, got tore up, kind of soiled and chipped and cracked. And somebody said, you know, if we could just find a man uh, that knew Raphael and could put himself in Raphael's shoes, we could touch that thing up and restore what Raphael had there. And they found a fellow who'd made a whole lifetime of studying and copying and imitating Raphael. He knew what kind of breakfast cereal he ate. I mean, he knew his habits and all that. And that fellow went to work there, and after a couple of years with the right mixtures, using the same kind of mix they used back in those days to make the paints made out of eggs, and using the same kind of mix he used back there 300 years ago, that fellow touched that thing up and restored that thing to where an art expert couldn't tell the difference. He restored the image. He restored the image. And folks, there's only one person in this universe that can restore the image that Adam lost. And it ain't me. And it's not the church. And it's not the sacraments. And it's not the scholars. And it's not the educators. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. You ought to tell that to Jesus. I know a soul that is steeped in sin. And no man's art can cure. I know a name, a name, a name that can make that soul all pure. I know a life that is lost to God, bowed down by the things of earth. But I know a name, a name, a name that can bring that soul new birth. I know of lands that are sunk in shame, of hearts that faint and tire. But I know a name, a name, a name that can set those lands on fire. Its sound is as a brand, its letters flame like glowing tongues of fire. I know a name, a name, a name of which mankind will never tire. And that name, Jesus. That name, Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Let's stand for prayer, people. Now, Father, now we pray in Jesus' name this morning that those uh, here today who are burdened and heavy laden and heavy hearted will take their problems to thee and talk them all over thee. And maybe they've talked them over before and have turned away and felt like they got a stone instead of bread. But I pray, Father, they'll keep on keeping on. You give them a final decision on it. And, Lord, may they not quit until they know your will and can say this is your will and can rejoice that this is your will. Lord, help them to pray it through and talk it over with you. And, Father, while their heads are bowed and eyes shut, I pray if there's any poor sinner that came here this morning that's been trying to dodge thee and get around thee and get by thee and get away from thee through the years, they'll come clean this morning. Step out of the seat in this invitation and walk these aisles for Jesus Christ and Come to him trusting him as their savior today and, and confessing their condition to him and accepting his cure for it. I ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, let's sing an invitation in this morning. Just as I am, y'all know it. Let's sing just as I am without one plea. invitation is open this morning to anybody here who has never received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. But I mean this, if you don't know, if you don't know this morning of a time and place in your life where you as a lost sinner accept that God's Son is your Savior, this is the invitation. Now, I'm not talking about believing about Christ. I'm not talking about believing in God. I'm not talking about that. If there never come a time in your life when you knew you were a sinner, that you were lost and needed a Savior, and accept that Jesus is your Savior, this, this verse is for you. 
I sing, Just as I am, I will receive. You step out and come on the invitation while we sing. Christian people that are here this morning, you know, isn't it, isn't it a wonderful thing to come to church Sunday morning when everything is clear? I mean, the record is all clean. You all confessed up. It's all talked over. It's all prayed over. You don't have to come to church with any guard up. You don't have to come to church with anything up in front of your face trying to duck something or dodge something. It's all told. Tell them about it. If it's not all told, get it all told tonight. When you come back in here tonight, why, just, just have everything out of you, brother. That's how to get the blessing. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Maybe some of you haven't had private prayer with the Lord for so long, it might take you all afternoon to get caught up. I don't know. But it shouldn't take you more than about five minutes. About five minutes.